Okay, yes. welcome to the latest episode of Literature and Lapdogs. We have two lapdogs here officially at the moment. Um, we have Teddy representing the small breeds uh, and the male element in the household, actually. <laughs> uh, and, and we have Georgie, but she's a little camera shy, so she's manning the floors. She's like, I'm uh, examining. <laughs> she's backstage, basically, um, for the purposes of this conversation. Um, which is appropriate because we're going to slightly deviate from our literature portion. We have the lap dogs, like two of the three. We're going to slightly deviate from our literature discussion and talk about prima facie. Uh-huh. Um, so the play that is currently on Broadway with Jody Keimer, I believe it finishes July 2nd. Yeah. Uh, so if you have a spare couple of hundred dollars, um, at least, you can go see this play. Um, we stress we did not have a spare couple hundred dollars. We actually managed to get tickets um, when it was miraculously cheaper um, than that. But it's well worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's going to be on National Theatre Live or National Theatre at Home, as it's officially called, yeah. of which I'm a huge fan. I've been, I have literally been talking about this for almost a decade they complaining. don't maintain their catalog they don't maintain their catalog so i can now complain about that <laughs> more <laughs> the copyright stuff come in like i want to be i want to be able to watch medea like year round thank you i i don't know i did national theater uk if you're listening uh, which i doubt you are but if you are uh please fix your subscription service so you just keep all your content available and just add everything to it because we really enjoy it and um i would like to justify the, the 12.99 um <laughs> And I have also like referred customers to you, so I feel like I'm owed a good catalogue. Um, anyway, Prime Aphasia, which may or may not end up on National Theatre at home as the official in party goes in, in the autumn. Because if you're in if you're in the US, I don't sound like I'm in the US, I am actually in the US. Uh, if I you're in the, UK, in the UK, it was done on the UK. UK. Sadly, if you aren't, if you're there in the UK, you've taken off. Yeah, you've missed it. That ship has sailed. Uh, I think and it was now April. it's here. They think people aren't gonna want to go see it live if they release it on national theater at home, which is so not true. People, we will go and watch it many, many times, and I will watch it happily at home, and I will still pay an inordinate amount of money, still an inordinate amount of money, to go and see it in the theater. I will not give up my theater experience. Um, okay, so playbill, dirty camera. Um, we lost our pride. Playbill. They changed the they changed the the cover slightly. Yes. Uh, for for Pride Month, which is kind of cool. Um, we lost that one in the midst. We may we'll find out later. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. So we've seen it twice. We yeah. saw it back we, in April, right? Is that when it was? It, when it came out, it came out in April. Um, over here in, in the US, and uh, we raced to see it. We bought tickets in November. I would just like to point that out. So. Um, but <laughs> just so we were we were diehard fans, not for um. Actually, now this is because my best friend introduced me to Kelly Eve. Yeah, I got her into it because I was watching it while I was cooking, and do not recommend if you want to understand it. Yeah, it's but... complicated. So I got called in to give sort of like expert interpretations of what the hell was going on in Killing Eve, which. Initially, of course, I could not answer, you know, what is this? Uh, no idea. So I had to go back to the very beginning and watch the entire thing. So here we are. I've now seen all of Killing Eve at least twice. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually read the books. I like my books too. Mm-hmm. She, she read the one book. I read the other ones too. Actually, I skimmed read the other book too. Um, I did. Yeah, they told me this. Isn't yeah, no. Kindle. Um, mm-hmm. No. No. Where did you get these? I don't remember, but I did. Um, find them again. Oh, I'll find them again. Um, okay, so uh, very well, very different from Killing Eve. I think the first fifty minutes is like watching Jodie Comer play Villanelle. Actually, um, energy wise, energy wise, it's very very similar. I was like really really pleasantly surprised when we first like watched it. Um, we were gonna do this yesterday because we saw it again yesterday. Yeah. We, we needed time like, for it to mellow. We needed to mellow. We were both tired. We also needed up. to get over the fact that, um, that alas, Jodie Comer was not signing autographs. She's had like had a reputation this entire time of being like really receptive to signing autographs. Um, 
and the first time we went to go see it uh you were there alone um I was in, the second. in the second row um and got shall we say tongue tied is that is that fair <laughs> <laughs> ow Oh, um, <laughs> I believe that's the point, but anyway, I'm just like, yeah, um, tongue tied is that, yes, mm-hmm. yes, uh, and when and when asked, when asked if anybody else, else, yeah, we've asked if anybody else would like an autograph, and I'm sure that did not, okay, I thought you sort of, but it sort of did, um, there was sort of like a anyone else moment, yes, yes, mm. at least this is what I was told at the time, and we were tongue tied. Ego, we did not get autographed first time around. So second time around, we go and see these performance. We go see another matinee. Um, highly recommend matinees if you'd like to save some money. Anyway, it was still a very good performance. Uh, but alas, uh, no autographs because uh, she wasn't coming out. There's like a three and a half hour window between performances. So makes sense. I probably wouldn't leave either. I'd probably go and sleep somewhere and have some cozy inside the theatre and be like done for several hours. So probably I'm suspecting what's, what's going on um and so we we went back um for the evening performance because it happened to sort of coincide with other things um uh, waited had a really really good spot i was very proud of our spot i've never had such a good spot in the line right sure. <laughs> and like three times we've gone to three times you've ever gone to get people sort of grass. this is not a regular thing we're sound like genuine stalkers here um <laughs> yes so we don't do that. this regularly okay i have like three people's signatures from all the theaters that i've ever been to it's really not mm, a bit i can attest she's dragged me to a lot of theaters i have been to a lot yeah we have dragged you to a lot, lots of theaters and this is only like the third time ever that we've gone and got autographs because we were actually on a mission for somebody else we were actually on a mission for a friend um i wanted to forgive me well there was this poor woman next to us as well who had like who was in, in holding in her hands like the book the the program the other thing that she was trying to get her to sign and kind of like fiddling around to figure out what was the best arrangement so she could like hold them out to have them signed it was oh, really was very so- sad um and then jody Cohen was just like sorry guys no <laughs> and everybody was just like what we've been here for 45 minutes um we totally get it self-care Go no, for it. it. But just, like, at the same time, um, please send someone next time. It would be really nice. Just tell, just tell your crew to tell people that you're not signing autographs, so that us schmucks, um, us mortals, don't end up waiting for forty five minutes. Because contrary to popular belief, um, we have other things to do. Anyway, <laughs> like I'm not intending this to be like a like let's dump on Jodie Comer. No, we love Jodie Comer. Um, well, genuinely yeah, she's called cool, the deadline huh in the deadline on cool. on what after she won the awards she was called uncool no she what? was called she... she was called what she was called julie for god's sake julie it was the thing you sent me oh yeah okay. so deadline please proofread um <laughs> yeah so many things. so many things um, okay, so Deadline is a, is a like a showbiz news platform. Since I teach for a film academy, I sign up for that so I can sort of like stay stay current with my students who may, <laughs> <laughs> who may or may not be up to date with this. I'm trying to be able to hang with the cool kids, so I need to know like what's going on. <laughs> Okay, that's really not that funny, but all right. <laughs> yeah, this is a play about sexual violence. <laughs> and we're like, you're laughing here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apparently, me trying to be cool is really that that hilarious. <laughs> It's so we can segue in class, okay, mm. when everybody's like losing the interest and turning their, their headphones on. I can say, hey, did anybody see that mm, that came out the other day? Um, huh? <laughs> Going out wide, people. Um, my film students are lovely. Um, okay. But they are. You just, you know. <laughs> 
Yeah. Plus, I was aware when Jodie Cameron won the Tony, so I just like to point that out as well. It was actually quite a useful. Swept one. the awards season, actually. Swept the awards. Oh, did she? Did she? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No. Prime of Asia didn't. It didn't win for best play. I think the only award it got was Prime of Asia. I mean, sorry, Prime of Asia, God. Um, so you've set me off now. Because it's really the, the best actress. Sure. Let me Google everything. I can Google everything. Don't go me. You're going to be the fact checker in this. Yeah, I'm going to be the fact checker. Okay, anyway. Okay, yeah. so the play, uh, for anyone who has not heard this yet, um, is about sexual assault, right? Uh, the main character experiences sexual assault without giving spoilers. Uh, the playbill doesn't try, or tries not to. Um, the entire show is packaged with, like, um, trigger warnings and, and the like even though they also have this this policy where they don't want to give too much away which i think is fair um i try not to give too much away here either but we do want to sort of talk about how the performance works um so the first for 50 minutes or so it's a, it's 100 100 minutes i mean the reports vary <sighs> yeah the reports vary of how long it is it does say inside the theater inside the golden theater that it's like 100 minutes but um, um like a- news things and 90 a drone it's not 90 and it was i'm sorry that was the sunday times got it wrong um shocker uh so it's it's 100 minutes according to the theater which seems like the most accurate thing because you do actually have to have people working on security and like all kinds of stuff and opening doors and things so um but there is a there is like a there's not an interval per se but there is a bit where there's like a it, it got extended the second time we watched it there's a part where she leaves the stage for a little bit and changes um and that i think that was longer than it was the first time around i could be completely wrong because um yeah. like part of the part of the point of the play is that you don't remember things accurately uh necessarily um but oh, you remember things like in, in weird ways. But um, it there is only that that bit that may may or may not stretch out just a little bit. Um, okay, so, yeah, it kind of didn't. But it didn't no, which is sad because mm-hmm. it really should have done. It made it sound like it did. Never mind. Okay. Well, I think it should. I think they made it sound like it should have done, which it probably should have done. Um, sorry. Uh, it's a really really good play, and uh, I have yet to buy the the actual text but I intend to um and actually to read it because it's very very good um it's super interesting because essentially it's a one woman show um essentially well essentially I mean it's not a one woman show suggests to me that she's just on stage the entire time just talking and you know like almost in a monologue kind of without <laughs> um something it suggests something different it suggests something almost like more comedic to me than, than yeah. drama based um so the hence my clarification um okay yeah i mean i mean about all the time for it that i went into this yeah no i mean it's she she is the only person on stage the entire time uh it is essentially a monologue even though it's, like, you can qualify that um it it's you know we'll talk about the writing style in a minute yeah the writing style is super super interesting um but it's a solo solo performance maybe better way of putting it solo performance Mm -hmm. um very very dynamic though right you talked about her moving furniture (laughs) which she she does she arranges the set moves tables she jumps on the table table, she jumps on the table table, table, down to the table around grabbing grinders yeah there's it's very very physical particularly in the first part um the first 50 minutes or so hence the villanelle comparison um it's also very funny and yes, the first which I didn't expect it to be the first yeah minute, yeah um in the first 50 minutes you don't expect it to be um well i mean you sort of uh, cover front cover it's not exactly a humorous humorous um but i mean it makes sense right it's it they're trying to get the the vibe of her character and she is very funny um you know and good. hmm good. Good. Uh, is a young person yeah so she's basically she's a lawyer she talks about her experiences in law school she talks about her experience in cambridge she talks about um which was very fun yeah uh my one my one little tweak um essentially talks about imposter syndrome for like two minutes but they, they don't actually name it which i figured they actually probably should because cambridge does or at least in my experience in cambridge they do um they call a spade a spade in that respect and talk about um imposter syndrome 
and how it affects people. Um, it's they do. They call a spade a spade. Yeah, they're direct about it. Okay, <laughs> not something I'd ever heard before. Okay. Apparently, I'm failing to keep up with these things. <laughs> this is this is not surprising. I mean, tears come out. I had a whole conversation yesterday with my students about like different phrases and language and stuff that's appropriate because we were doing a DEI event. Um, I was essentially babysitting for a DEI event and like, you know, supervising. It really was like babysitting. They they all had pizza and drinks and it was like, talk amongst yourselves for um, 50 minutes and then we'll give you a topic. Yeah, I'll give you a topic. Um, yeah, so, well, I, I'm at the risk of giving too much away. Um, we kind of have to. So, Tessa so, Ensler. Yeah, so if you don't want spoilers, maybe You can't maybe say like, Tessa Ensler. She's Tessa Ensler. Tessa Ensler? You can't say Tessa Ensler. She's Tessa Ensler. Tessa Ensler, yeah. Okay, so she's from Liverpool. Uh, so she, right. she kind of gets to Out of Jodie Comer. So Jodie Comer actually, actually gets to use her... Gets to use... Gets to use her Liverpudlian accent um which is i mean mm -hmm. given the whole villain all thing it's very interesting and someone who's in british accent was developed with decidedly cheap and she does shift it actually i think right there's times where she like as she's performing there is a dialect coach actually on the list of people for the the casting production um dialect and speech so she does I, mean, I think were times I thought when she was getting more emotional when she played. Like, yeah, so. there's there's times like when she's like she's like when she's cursing when she's um like describing like she's doing like a almost an aside for herself, right? She's re she sometimes is like re reports on speech like recreates speeches that she's she's herself has made and sometimes other people have made so she actually does use other people's accents she imitates a cop, right? And a judge and a judge. Um, and then she she has herself when she's speaking in court, which I think doesn't have the accent. Yeah, has um, some received pronunciation Queen's English. Yeah, definitely, which makes sense. I mean, she's going she's going in there projecting, barrister, she's projecting, an, projecting image. an image. She's supposed to be a QC barrister, right? No, they thought I thought they called it QC the first time we watched it, and then they were calling it Casey. Sorry, Casey. 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 Cancel. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But they kept calling it Casey the second time. Oh, they call it Casey the second time. So King's Oh, well, they have to now. They have to. Now. Of course they do. Okay, so they shifted it. Oh, that's interesting. Come on. I didn't even spot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Make this into a dream. Again. <laughs> References to Charles and Boone. Um. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Also a Broadway show, I believe. Um. <laughs> Come on, Georgie. And Join the fray, Jordan. And keep batting the cushion. Okay, she's coming. Um, yeah, so they did oh god, they did change that. That's depressing. Oh, okay, so they changed it to Casey. Oh lordy. Why though? I mean it's not like it's Good not God save the king. Yeah, but it's not like it has to be contemporary. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it doesn't have to be, it could be something I mean it's supposed to be in the present. Actually, it's supposed to be three years in the past. Yeah. Explain. Okay, so there's a passage of time. There is this like Virginia Woolf passage of time. Um, two hundred and seventy-eight days. But it was three hundred and seventy-eight. Three hundred and seventy-eight days. Right. Really? No, it's more than that. Seven hundred and forty-eight days. No, some forty-two. No, it's it's three it's years. Like Seven hundred. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's got it's almost Roger, I'm pretty sure because the writers of Australia and it was like the limit as to how many days you can have between like the accusation and, and the, the trial. trial. All right, so maybe like so yeah. But it's yeah. it's a bit boring. It's like what? So what's two years, not three years. Um I but I it's calculating this in the theatre is like two years and 50 days yeah but my point is almost it's it's getting there it's like it's in into its third year right by the time it's actually dealt with which means that it's not contemporary so when she's talking about the earlier events it shouldn't be it shouldn't be casey 
I'm not doing that to be case. And it shouldn't be. How are you going to project three years into the future? Anyway. <laughs> Please don't make it Casey. <laughs> this is note, our notes on the play. Please don't do that. It's depressing enough. Um, it really is depressing enough, people. Um, yeah. So they, they well, have changed. They might, did they change that? Because maybe I'm misremembering. But no. it felt weird. No, I think they had QC. Um, I could I could be completely wrong. Um but yeah. Anyway, um she basically she's a barrister, right? She worked in the UK, um, for anyone who's not unaware of this, uh, the UK is different. You don't sort of work as a lawyer and jump between meeting clients and then going into court. You actually yeah, if you're a solicitor, yeah, it's not law and order. If you're a solicitor, you meet with clients outside of the court and then you have a barrister who represents you. What um Uncle David? He's a solicitor. Okay, yeah, because like I keep remembering him as a barrister and I realise like that doesn't sound right. No, he's not. Um no, he was working at Crafts House, I remember that. Very yeah, but I mean like, me and then I forgot. So there's other films, there's other, obviously there's other films and TV shows that depict it, but um doubt it always makes me think of doubt actually with uh, Rachel Weiss, which is like the thing about um the Holocaust denial thing. Oh I'm doubt, sorry, denial. denial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm confusing things. Um <laughs> yeah, uh denial, not doubt. Doubt is something completely different, but they're also dealing with social assault, which is probably why I'm like Freudian slipping in. Um yeah, so denial is a uh, thing about the Holocaust uh denier, hence the the title. Um, which also deals with the fact that when you have a, a case in the UK, you have oh, uh, solicitor and then a barrister. Hello, I'm Virginia. Not grinning during this, but that's okay. Hi, Jenny. Okay. So we have now we have three labs. Okay. Sort of, but the third one is not. All. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not a lab dog. Um, any dog is the last dog. You just have to try. You just have to yeah, you just to embrace it. Um, so we're joined by Virginia. Virginia Werewolf. Indeed. Um, okay, so uh, did you want to talk about the writing style? Yes, I was trying. And quickly, she departs. That's lovely. Mm-hmm. Well, seems kind of perfect. We're about to talk about stream of consciousness, but you know, I kept trying to put a name to this. I don't... Um, stream of the best thing I can come up with is stream of consciousness, but it's like it's really an extended monologue it's an extended internal monologue yes yeah it's really like an extended internal monologue where she's describing everything that happens to her she's occasionally uh ventriloquizing other characters in her life right um sometimes doing aside it's basically i mean yeah it can stream of consciousness i mean particularly when she's cursing and then yeah i mean maybe and then there's a difference between like her describing her thoughts and then her actual sides. Yeah. Because I mean, there's the time when she's thinking back to law school. Mm-hmm. And the guy next to her is just dismissed her. Mm hmm. As a. As not, yeah, as, as not being <laughs> not the right sort, basically. No, it's especially entertaining to me because. Uh, Boarding school girls. Yeah, boarding school girls. She imitates boarding school girls at a later point. Um, Why do I get the That's going to get fiddly in it. Um, yeah, so something like stream of consciousness. I mean, it's for, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's also present tense for the most part, mm-hmm. right? Which is present, except for when she goes to flashbacks. Yeah, except for the flashbacks. What does she in the I would say it feels like it's present tense most of the time because there is this like weird immediacy to all of it. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe um, we could. It would be interesting to see when I actually get a copy of the text. Um, it feels like that. Though. Mm-hmm. The effect being, it's yeah, like you're the sort of, effect being that you're moving with her. Yeah, through mm-hmm. her experiences etc um yeah um so the one criticism i heard about it i think you read this too was um 
I can't remember if it was like Times or Post. I'm pretty sure it was Times, actually. But... I think it was Times, the New York mm-hmm. Times. Um, again, like, hmm. um, where they were talking about how you know, the, like, obviously talking about how great it is because I mean, I think you'd be stupid to call it anything other than great. Um, the only sort of like mild criticism is that that at the end when it sort of like addresses um sexual violence so i think we can we can say that without giving too much away because there is a poster right um they give you there's a poster that they give you with a playbill so i'm not actually like you can't even say this but i'm not giving anything away here um where it talks about every 98 seconds someone in the u.s is sexually assaulted um it's estimated only 19 percent of all rapes are reported um, that mean, that means that probably well over 3.8 million women are raped in the U.S. last year, or were raped in the U.S. last year. Nearly one in two women has experienced rape, sexual violence, or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime, etc. It goes on, um, and only about five percent of rapes reported to the police lead to an arrest. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's the, there's a there's a like big project attached to that really. Um, so yeah giving giving that 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 when she talks about that when she like um addresses that at the end and she's in court and she's in court doing it and the light actually the lights and the house lights are like turned up actually yes because that's when she's talking about how she sees all the women who have come before yeah. and all the women who will come after right there's that's a sort the of like in, engaging she didn't people. realize the first time and then i said it's like oh that's nice sort of yeah um, i'm not sure nice is the right word but solidarity moment um yeah oh Ginny's camera shy I said Georgie was camera shy but Ginny is apparently camera shy here um so yeah the only criticism I heard it was that that was essentially preaching to the choir um Mm -hmm. because it's unlikely that you would go and see a play like this without already agreeing or with with the position and like the way that it's done is kind of preachy sort of yeah, but it's supposed to be a court mon- like it's supposed to be a monologue that she makes in court, and and part of the selling point of the story is that she is a, she is a defense barrister herself, mm-hmm. dealing with the court system basically again without giving too much away. Um, so she sort of makes a critique of it at the end. Um, I don't know whether that's I, like we, th- we were thinking about it this time around, and I don't know whether that criticism is actually fair because whilst she might well be addressing the choir in the sense that people who go and see the show people who are inclined to go and see the show are likely to be receptive to like the well they're, they're going to sympathize with the with the victim right with the with Jodie Coven's character oh, of course you are you're not going to go see it if you don't um I think it's probably the, the point yeah. right and she's the source of the narrative you have to, like how how do you, how would you not you're always gonna um you're almost always gonna sympathize with the narrator which will be a thing in Wuthering Heights which will be a thing in Wuthering Heights yeah um so yeah you, you're compelled to anyway and she is a very sympathetic character in this particular instance um but she's not just speaking out about all oh, this happens all the time we need to do better she's actually a sent from from a position of knowledge right um proposing a solution that i mm, um don't know is necessarily something that whilst it's not something that people are necessarily going to disagree with as a, as a solution um i don't know that it's something that everybody's like oh yeah i've thought of that all right um <laughs> that, oh yeah that's an obvious thing to think of um i mean in a sense it is but on the other hand articulating it is still important um it kind of reminds me of the um we're big fairly fairly big i'll say um law and order uh svu fans um and i i've taught I, well i've taught law and, S- and order svu because of its um initial impact in terms of like dealing with rape and sexual violence and stuff um and and the impact that it had and the fact that it's it has managed for the most part to stay really current in a lot of its ideas um and a lot of its depictions i mean a lot of that they do i mean they they talk about um 
intimate partner violence very very effectively they talk about peer-to-peer -peer violence they talk about they also recently their 500th episode recently well not recently but um the 500th episode was was pretty damn brilliant in terms of addressing it was i mean for for fans yeah. of the show maybe not but in terms of what it was I'm actually talking about um it was pretty amazing that it was talking about power differentials in a really really sophisticated way essentially explaining why people um have, have you know dealing with the fact that you know certain generations find stories like jane eyre intensely romantic whereas oh, present oh. generations um with the sort of advancement of knowledge about uh complexities of, of intimate relationships realize it's not really romantic at all um and probably actually charlotte bronte in, in defense of her did not intend it to necessarily yes. be all that romantic as we will discuss in a subsequent episode um That's but having the language yes yeah, so episodes okay but the having the language to articulate what a fair number of people are aware of and like putting a name to it or putting an idea to a concept that most people are all sort of circling around as it were i don't think that's redundant even if you are actually talking to a group of people who already agree with you plus there was a woman who was laughing you know yeah, sure. Yeah. um yeah. pretty sure it was a woman uh a couple of rows ahead of us uh who at, at critical moments when it really was not funny um was laughing um so there were no there were no cell threats though that we could see that no, bonus people name switch seats but that was fun. oh yeah there was a seat switch uh um but but I we didn't see but we did not see the cell phone i did hear a cell phone at one point but only one um i didn't the see any text chimes maybe once but the text was at the cell phone not area i can't remember mm -hmm. um but it wasn't as bad as other productions that we've been to in terms thank god in terms of um, thank god being please. on their cell phones please please don't be please, please. Silent please, please do please. not disturb <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm all in favor of not turning it off actually the director of the like the president of the company that's behind all the all their productions basically has this little message in the playbill and he's saying you know turn it all the way off i kind of don't agree with that um you know if you have significant others of any you know form um two-legged or four-legged um you kind of need to actually keep your phone on but you can silence them this is a nice thing about uh cell phones and mm -hmm. you can like you can put them away and you can like very you know if you have to look at them you can do very like mm -hmm. very specific not moments. distract everybody in the theater please um please 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 because it's got it's got to be so distracting for the actors gee <laughs> um anyway um yeah it was it was um I don't know whether I agree. I, like I don't. I probably don't agree with that. Yeah, no, I, 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 I think I actually, particularly the second, the second particularly time. the second time around. The first time around, I was like, mm. uh, but the second time around, watching it again, um, I don't think it. I don't think that's fair criticism. I think they kind of. You know, the first time around, I think I felt weird about it. And it was like, and then I read, I felt weird about the end. The end. The end. Yeah. It. That felt off, and yeah. then I read the article and was like, okay, yeah, yeah. But this time it didn't feel this off. This time it didn't feel off. didn't feel off. Um, at the risk of at the risk of spoilers, um, there's also a really, 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 really effective, and I think probably probably my favorite bit of the entire play, um, when there's a moment of realization as she's testifying, um, mm -hmm. about the person involved, right um and her recollection of it which kind of does something that I, I think is a really really important part of the conversation that because it's a very I mean with again without giving too much away uh there, it's a gray area of sexual assault right it's, it's not gray area it's, it's a it's complicated it's not a it's not a in any way shape or form it's, it's straight it's probably the most complicated scenario that you could get in terms of dealing with consent um right is that fair yes yeah um in the sense yeah um so so it's i mean but it but it's also not because of because of certain other details but in in the in the broader context of the situation it, it's complicated so it's probably about as complicated as you could get hence the reason that the character who is a defense attorney is so 
you wound up about it right and and so concerned about her own case i mean she's literally she literally yeah, runs through it in her head and talks. she's like interrogate you yeah interrogate has been interrogating like herself the it. entire time and like why did you go do this and when did she um uh, sets up parallels to another survivor mm-hmm. she had to cross-examine in a yeah. different case yeah and she goes and interrogates herself in like, the same before way before and during her own yeah case and she's yeah. like you went you did this you did, you did this, this. You did people this. saw you you consented to do this you consented to do that people saw you together people saw this um so all of that but she also has this profound moment of realization as she's testifying and being forced to like try and like clarify details that of course she's she struggles to remember because of the, which part of the conversation because it's a traumatic event um and she has this moment of realization that the person involved was actually you know that it was deliberate that and 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 that she has been not incapacitated. It was not incapacitated, and that she's also been she's also been essentially like defending him the entire time. Even like, even even though she you know she's seeking justice and she's prosecuting, she's you know bringing a case. For a, um, this, like he's a she's guy. yeah yeah yeah. She's been she's like, been sort of like um feeling responsible. He's your career, career she's been running through all that stuff in her head and feeling like oh my god this is it was like you know essentially it was it's a uh, um and he's got all these like college buddies with yeah him. precisely and his parents she's just got him on there and she gets to see this this dynamic um this other other side of the person that she had not anticipated she had not seen um and realizes that no it's not i need to stop like <laughs> don't need to like worry about him being a fundamentally nice person who just like didn't understand the situation or whatever Mm -hmm. uh no this was planned and this was this was all like you know uh this is also something that it's alluded to that he's done before so um that i thought that was and and i'd forgotten about that too Uh, i think we've we've both we've we've both kind of like forgotten about that detail And, and you do i think i think that's actually like a narrative detail Right, I think that's actually a, a a deliberate part of the narrative. You're supposed to be surprised by that. I like think. it's offhand when she's it's, like describing it's... it in the first place. What? The actual detail. The actual yeah, when she first mentions it. Yeah, when, when she, she first mentions... describes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when she first yeah. describes this particular thing that happens before, it's and she just like mm-hmm. mentions it. Yeah, it's very yeah, it is very offhand. Um, and very like in the flow of events. And it's very even... normal. You don't even. Yeah. You're not even like, oh, it was actually an important detail. Yeah, but then when she comes back to it, it's a really, really profound and and important, it's a huge aha moment of like, wow, Eureka. Yeah. Um, But also a good, I think also a good moment for her. Like, I think that's also that's also presented validation. Yeah, it's validation. Um, It's which is so yeah, super important. Um, Where she's yeah, she's sort of able to. So then the voir dire is after that, right? Yeah, which they make a point about speaking the truth. Yeah. So what? It, hmm? Say it louder for the people in the back. <laughs> the voir dire. Yes. Right. Yeah. The fact that they have a voir dire um, which means, all the way through, which is originally means like which means like a legal through, term to get the jury term. out of the room so they yes. don't hear something that's potentially prejudicial. Right. Um, and it, it from the Latin actually kind of like means to <laughs> as Virginia um, sticks her head in there. Oh, wow, we want in. Hello, Miss Girl. Okay, oh, uh, yeah, so we want so we have all three lap dogs at this point, but all sprawled two sprawled on the floor, one sprawled on the couch. Okay, um, Seti, okay, <laughs> oh. Okay. Um. Yeah. There is a lot of English, English, real English, proper English, <laughs> British English. Um. I like I okay, I'm so like, what was it? The the Fanta. That's um, a drink out here, right? Was, yes, it's Fanta. It's like a fizzy drink. I know what it is. I'm just trying to figure out whether it's like a UK thing or a 
I'm pretty sure it was the UK. I thought it was no, but like I, I enjoyed that the first time around. I was like, oh my god, yes, Fanta, Tesco know, Express, Tesco Express, right? I Te- mean, like the corner shop guy having slow the business. The corner shop having slow business because of the Tesco, Tesco, Express. Tesco Express. This is like, this is like not... that was like, oh my god, I missed this. I know, but my, my, I was like wondering like how that resonates with the American audience versus the UK audience because obviously it's like second nature to a UK audience. Like, oh yeah, Tesco <laughs> down the road. God, um, yeah. <laughs> um, it's like a train from London to Liverpool. London to it's Liverpool. England is fucking tiny. I'm sorry, yeah. no. I've been... And they have direct trains. Oh, good train service. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but I was looking at maps for other things. I was like, oh my god, you can literally just go from here to here. It would take like three hours. You haven't gone there to there, and it's taken three hours. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, actually, no. They, they, this is not relevant to prima facie per se. But driving driving distances in the UK versus the US are relative, right? So like three, I always used to say like three hours driving in Texas, like from Austin to Dallas. Which I'm pretty was, sure most people make this point is the equivalent like, i'm sure they do can, but it's worth saying again um that it's like the equivalent of driving an hour in the uk all right because you you get the roundabouts like, people there are roundabouts um and you have to just constantly slow down and and there are speed cameras um, there are real speed cameras um you get nicked um and uh yeah it's it's much more uh intense than you get country roads which is a delight um I know Geneva, but I yeah. Um, country, country roads. roads. Yeah, like, this is where you feel the need to weigh in. I'm sorry, it? I get mocked by this by my ancestors, but I cannot do like country roads. I cannot. Neither can I. I can't drive country roads. I have to do like gates to fields. I struggled with that. Oh yeah, gates and fields. You have to when you go walking. It's like it's they're fiddly. Like, they are fiddly, and there's ca- <laughs> there's cattle grades. People, there's cattle grades. You have to go the cattle, which I had to explain to one of my students the other day as well. We were talking about mountains and things that you drive over in Wales. Mountain, they're probably real hills, really, but <laughs> we call them mountains. Oh, um, mountains, because we like to feel good about ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yes, and and they have cattle grades, which is your upside down gate. Before, I don't know um, which ones those are. Your your horizontal gate. One of the it's trying to break. Bars. It's trying to break. Yeah, it's trying to break your ankles. Um, or oh, water and or testing your balance, probably both. Like have good balance or die. <laughs> like have good balance or really seriously screw your foot. Um, yeah. I mean, I wore impractical shoes yesterday and did screw on my feet. But yes, be careful when walking in New York as well. It's very yes it's challenging like, it's still... okay oh. did we have any other passing thoughts about conversation not really not really do you no not really um I mean, maybe say something i'll think of something else no i was just saying it'd be well worth it's it. well worth it um i, I think jodie kramer is going to win everything she's what part halfway to an egot mm-hmm. i mean it's, she's got three of it wait no, she's got two of the two acting trifecta. Right, she's basically won eight out of ten things she's been nominated for. And the yeah. other two things were basically like fan ranked. Yeah, so everyone could place bets on things. I would like so place bets. Be mm. Um, yeah, well, uh, I think Emma Thompson and uh, Mary Beard talked about how that's it's not all it's cracked up to be. Uh, no, it's really sad. You become a dame, where it's like, you know, sirs become sirs. Um. Anyway, okay, it's well worth seeing if you can see it. Um, it's going to be on probably National Theatre at home at some point. Um, you can watch clips of it on YouTube. I did discover that yesterday. Yes, they have trailers. They have trailers. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can kind of see what's what's about. Um, I oh yeah, the only other thing was the fact that she was a person of like questionable morals. Um, I thought that was a little bit harsh. Oh um, yeah, like that Tessa was... has question has questionable morals. She has a lot barrister people. Outsider. I mean, like oh, the yeah. point she, is that she does her job. Um, she has a moral system. Yeah, she does, it's, and it, like, it's based on the law. Yeah, I mean, it's the way. It's, I mean, if she. If, 
if her moral system is dubious, then it's actually a, a criticism of the entire system, not hers per se. Um, as my research assistant looks things up here, what are we looking at? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it's not available. No. Anyway, it may be available. Yeah. 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 It may be available on National Theatre Live. It is actually broadcasting, I think, next next month actually the broadcasting in london which suggests it will eventually be broadcasting in the u.s in the u.s or anywhere else um anyway mm -hmm. highly recommended really really good fantastic performance from jodie Parrish. she deserves to win everything um and really really important play so if you will get a chance to read it recommending it on that front too